opening credit font made possible by Sega Master System. Reading. If you enter this latitude and longitude into your computer somewhere, you'll find that you're in China, not Bakersfield, California. Full riot in progress. Computer system with the graphics capability of a Commodore 64 can determine that it's a food riot and that no weapons are present. Approximately 1,500 civilians, no weapons evident. Proceed. Also, Ben somehow knows this despite the fact that the computer gives him all the information after he tells command. Okay. Unnecessary orders. Perfectly valid code doesn't work when you're getting shot at, cliche. Bullshit security system knows how to concentrate all its energy into exploding the human head. Okay, so this is clearly the last guy they had to kill to escape the prison, and he had no gun. So after they killed the one last guy with the gun, the computer dude should have been easy to pick off well before this poor bastard Chico got his head blown up. You guys wanna buy a hot stereo? Movie gets Dweezil Zappa so that he can quote lyrics from I'm the Slime. Dumbest security code ever. Also, why does this f***ing thing have numbers 10 through 12? Are you ready for pay? Two movies in 1987, this one and Predator, feature two future governors. What's the sin count now, California and Minnesota? Future newscasts make everything ridiculously awkward by having reporters face toward the graphic inserts on a rotating cube. They told me the last ten I was taken away for. Amber stops her sentence short for whatever reason so that Ben has to ask her what the hell she's talking about. This guy's occupation is anti-fireworker. I guess the term firefighter becomes too hard to say in 2017? This guy's occupation is interpreter, which should be interpreted as the incorrect spelling of interpreter. They're all in a censored list. 1987 movie envisions 2017 is a time where cassettes are still the main way to listen to music. Despite the fact that Ben Richards looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger and has a very specific body type, all of the airport security is fooled by a hat and sunglasses. Futuristic Travel Pass doesn't seem to contain any information other than whoever holds this thing is totally legit. Go on, go on. Security guy allows unverified couple to walk through simply because all of this is annoying. Futuristic phones advance leaps and bounds from 1987 simply by cutting off the circular earpiece and mouthpiece, but keeps the cord for some reason. He's wrapped. I can melt the showtime. Makes for a dramatic shot, I guess, but they don't have anything they could inject him with that would knock him out for the same amount of time. Some airport personnel were not so lucky. Look, I get that the news is controlled by the government and they want to make Ben Richards out to be worse than he is, but there were literally hundreds of witnesses at the airport. If you're going to tell lies, tell lies no one can refute. Looks like the concept of high-def TVs could be imagined back in 1987, but sticking it out in the middle of a rough area where it could get rained on, peed on, cracked, possibly stolen, and hundreds of other calamities were not a concern at all. Coke's inflation was deemed so crazy in 1987 that the filmmakers figured, yeah, there'll be six bucks in 2017. Also, the fictional Cadre Cola is such a big hit that Coca-Cola allows a competitor on their own machine. Either that or Cadre is such a nasty corporation that they force it on Coke's machine, but... Then why not make all the choices cadre if that's the case? Lucky he didn't kill you too. Or rape you and kill you. Or kill you then rape you. This woman seems to find rape appealing. Why the f is a mirror down here? Is it so they can get this cool shot? Man, as fast as they're going and as long as this is taking, how deep into the earth are they going in order to play this game? So in the middle of all this nonsense in the filing cabinet, they keep a special section just for the Bakersfield massacre? There's not one file in this cabinet that refers to any other big story. Just random things like air surveillance, and burial records, and zone control. Also, they keep an unedited version of the Bakersfield Massacre in this filing cabinet because f*** covering your tracks. Here in the locker room. Why would this game show need a locker room? A person from the audience picks a stalker, and that stalker usually goes out and kills the convict. Are there times they don't kill the convict? Are they on a clock? Are there other stalkers waiting their turn in the unlikely event that the other guy fails? And who the f*** are these people? None of them are stalkers we see later. But here's a bunch of half-naked people hanging out in the locker room nonetheless. Apparently the crowd will be betting on someone called Zub-Zero and not Sub-Zero as originally planned. Sub-Zero conveniently cut a piece of fence post with razor wire on it that Ben conveniently sees while he's fighting for his life so that Ben can conveniently slice Sub-Zero's throat with it. Here is Sub-Zero! Now, Plane Zero! Interesting quip, considering that Plane Zero is actually more than Sub-Zero. So glad we took care of Sub-Zero! Yeah, he was a real pain in the neck. Arnold Schwarzenegger is James Bond. I, I think maybe Dynamo, but... But what's all was last year's champion? Champion of what? Killing the most convicts? How do the stalkers on The Running Man compete with each other, and how is that a fair contest when the audience decides who goes out into the arena? Will you please help me welcome our mystery contestant? I guess once the government allowed Killian to put Ben Richards on The Running Man, they allowed him to just take anybody he wanted. Even people who hadn't been convicted of a crime yet.
jutting piece of rebar available for all your table turning needs. Okay, Amber, I'm gonna need you to remember these numbers. Because I'm clearly gonna die soon and the convenient plot device to get you on the running man won't be in vain. Where's Dynamo? I thought this was a tag team. Buzzsaw has a clear advantage, wastes it by hoisting the saw like a baseball bat instead of just going ahead and stabbing Richards with it. There's Dynamo, expertly waiting in the dark with his suit made of light brights while Buzzsaw gets his ball sawed in half. That was kind of Dynamo to wait until Weiss made sure Amber knew the decode combination before electrocuting him. With the clear advantage of having the power of electricity in his hands and Ben running straight for him, Dynamo decides getting in the ATV is the best choice in the situation. Did he really think this was going to work? No. I won't kill a helpless human being. Not even sadistic scum like you. But cutting Buzzsaw's balls off a second ago, that was completely necessary. But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Okay, well, I've got to take a sin off for that line right there. We've still got two crack stalkers out there, right? Dynamo and Fireball. Dynamo just got his ass handed to him. Who would give that asshole another chance? And why bother bringing out Fireball and letting him do his little fire show on the stage if he wasn't going to be the absolute next stalker to go out in the arena? And I choose... Ben Richards. Richards. That boy's one mean motherfucker. Since everything in this society is censored by the government, it's amazing this granny wasn't immediately thrown into the arena for having such a fucking potty mouth. Bless you, Ben. Bless you, Ben. Go fight. Go fight. Holy shit, you did just see Ben conquer three stalkers, right? What kind of bullshit odds are you giving yourself here? That dude bet $200. If he wins, you have to pay him 20 grand. And then there's all the other assholes betting on Richards. These bookies never heard of even money before. Basically, that's your ass if Richards wins. You might as well kill yourself, face. Fireball predicted that Ben and Amber would have no clue where they were going and would end up in this exact spot. Wait, these barrels are actually filled with gasoline? They just leave that valuable shit lying around in old barrels in a game arena? Which reminds me, maybe they put the gas here on purpose because it's Fireball's level. I mean, Sub-Zero had his own hockey rink. But what was so special about Dynamo and Buzzsaw's level? Nothing. And that's sad, too, because Buzzsaw was last year's champion. Hey look, a magical box of road flares! All of these dead guys, despite obviously not being military, wore dog tags so Amber could identify them. What's the audience watching right now? It can't be this, right? Because there are too many secrets in this room and probably no cameras. Now that's what I call a slow burn, am I right? There's no place in here where Ben could just be hanging from the ceiling. When Amber walked in, we see a basic ceiling with overhead lights. Is Ben Richards Spider-Man? So wait, they were watching that? I'm afraid not. Besides, the big reveal that the three winners from last year actually died is totally out of the bag if they did. Forget it, Killian. I won't do it. That's why I bothered to put most of my costume on, because I'm putting my foot down. Laughlin, Weiss would have died for nothing. They didn't. I have the uplink code. You still remember that shit? I know we mentioned that these two guys were governors of actual states, but these guys were governors of actual states. Try this instead. What is it? It's the original video from the Bakersfield massacre. How was she able to keep that? She was caught stealing this thing, and then they put her in running man clothes. Did she Maria full of grace this video somewhere? Where did you hide that? It's none of your business. Haha, ha, cheeky, but bullshit. But at least the movie acknowledges it, which is more than I can say for most. Mr. Spock, you have the calm. Who's Mr. Spock? Okay, earlier there was a joke about someone not knowing what Gilligan's Island was because it's 2017 and haha, ha, young people. But some computer nerd guy doesn't know what the fuck Spock is? That's pretty short-sighted future prediction right there. Hello, you're on the air. Introduction of a cell phone near the end of the movie makes one wonder why there weren't more cell phones in this movie. Like our previous winners, Whitman. Price and Haddad. Remember them? The Resistance did not have pictures of these dead people, especially not from the same angles that we saw them in the movie. What mission? Gun to face. Don't touch that guy. Man, they got every conceivable angle of the Bakersfield Massacre back then. I mean, this is thorough. We're experiencing technical difficulties. Bullshit! Professional spotlight guy keeps doing his job even as the world of the running man caves in around him. Idiot dickhead just starts shooting wildly with hundreds of innocent people around. I'll show you, dickless. I sure I'm glad Ben didn't kill this guy earlier, because now we get to see a beautiful scene like this. This shot. I might be wrong, but wouldn't the electricity pass through all the water that's falling in the room right now and electrocute Amber as well? At the very least, she's in danger, and sitting here watching this dude die is not a good strategy.
random assholes. These security guys keep coming through a side door one by one like it's Contra or Double Dragon or some shit. <laughs> Why is Killian laughing? What is this one asshole gonna do that all the armed guys couldn't do? I got to score some steroids. Man, I'm glad this dude walked all the way here just so he could pull the rug out from under Killian. Do they have a bunch of these sleds just ready to go at a moment's notice? I mean, seriously, why is there a mirror in this tunnel? <laughs> so that explodes for some reason. Wait, these guys aren't dead yet for not being able to pay the Ben Richards bets? What an amazingly peaceful dystopian society this is. Ben and Amber lived happily ever after. They had so many babies, and to think, it all started with a simple kidnapping and nut punching. Those crazy kids. But hey, will you will you just let me explain? This is television. That's all it is. Uh, it's nothing to do with people. It's to do with the rating. Cut! 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 You killed your ass. Belong to us. To the public. To the media. That's how it is, and we are buried, right? <laughs> it's time to start running. <laughs> Got with you. Richard, I have my daughter Kathleen. Hello. My daughter Sandra. Hello. My son Christopher. And my daughter Kristen. Ooh, you bet I got something to say. You check it out. Ooh, the most beautiful body in professional wrestling. And I got something to talk about. Everywhere I've been going throughout the country, I've been touring with Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> 